Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Now, today, on this fourth Sunday of the year, I'm going to invite you in a very special way to focus on the second reading. This is St. Paul's first letter to the people of Corinth. We've been hearing about this. We heard about it last week, and I'm going to refer to it. Uh, but pay close attention to this particular passage today. We're going to do the long version of it for those of you who are following it. Um, and it might sound a little familiar. Please stand for the opening hymn. let us call to mind our sin and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life.
us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. But do you gird your loins, stand up and tell them all that I command you? Be not crushed on their account, as though I would leave you crushed before them. For it is I this day who have made you a fortified city, a pillar of iron, a wall of brass against the whole land, against Judah's kings and princes, against its priests and people. They will fight against you, but do not prevail over you, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it is not jealous, it is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude, it does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. If there are prophecies, they will be brought to nothing. If tongues, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. For we know partially and we prophesy partially. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. When I became a man, I put aside childish things. At present, we see indistinctly, as in a mirror, but then face to face. At present, I know partially. Then I shall know fully, as I am fully known. So, faith, hope, and love remain, these three. But the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus began speaking in the synagogue, saying, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke highly of him. They were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Isn't this the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb. Physician, cure yourself, and say, do here in your native place all the things that we heard were done in Capernaum. He said, amen, I say to you, 
No prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, and the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong. But Jesus passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. St. Paul spent about a year and a half preaching and teaching in Corinth as part of his ministry. He knew these people. He was heavily invested in their lives. He gave everything to them. But now he's got a problem. He's not there right now. He's writing them a letter because word has gotten back to him that there are all sorts of divisions that are tearing the community apart. And these divisions are at such an extreme that Paul's got to intervene. He's compelled. Now, last week, we heard out of chapter 12 of the first letter to the Corinthians, his great image about how you bring unity out of diversity. And his example, you might recall, was the body. He said, just like the body has all of these different parts, they're all different. They have to work together for the body to flourish. He says, what's true for the body is true for the body of Christ. We need each other. And we need to work together. And when we unite, when we bring all of our different resources together, cooperating, collaborating, connecting, communicating in a way that we support and help each other, we flourish. Now he takes it to this reading we have today. Now I gotta tell you, I grew up with this reading. I, I come from a big, loud, noisy Italian family. And when I was a kid, I hit, I don't know how many weddings in 10 years, and we always heard this reading in weddings. I, I thought it was literally the church's wedding reading. Because it's all about love, right? Well, the interesting thing is, it's a beautiful reading. I'm glad we use it for weddings. But this is not a reading for weddings. This is a reading intended for people to have the fundamental principle of faith that drives everything we do, and that's love. That Paul is trying to point out, if the body's got to work together, if the body of Christ is going to work together, then the motivation has to be the love of Christ. The love of God is absolutely essential for everything. And if that's missing, then I'm a resounding gong and a clanging cymbal. Love is the absolutely essential ingredient in the Christian life. All right, well, that's great, but now we need a working definition because we throw the word love around all the time. And we're not talking here about some warm, fuzzy feeling. The classic definition for love is to love someone means I want what's best for that person. And my words, my actions are going to be about building that person up and helping that person to the best of their capacity. That means that sometimes because I love somebody, I'm going to do something I don't like and they might not like. Think about what parents do for their kids or what kids might have to do for their aging parents. When we love, we seek what's best. But love then becomes the way in which we can evaluate our own lives in a very profound way by both looking within and then looking without. By checking that hidden part of us to see, am I living the love of Christ? And then to look out and say, am I putting it into practice? Now think about this. First, let's talk about the inside. Our thoughts, our motivations, our intentions. We can take this reading that Paul gives us in 1 Corinthians and we can say, okay, look, the part that nobody sees, the thoughts going through my head, are they loving? The reason why I get up in the morning and do what I do, the motivations, my intentions, are they motivated by love or something else? Because some of that's hidden, right? 
but we know it. And we can ask the powerful, sometimes awkward, but always valuable question, is the love of Christ flourishing on the inside in my soul? And am I thinking about, intending, and striving to put that love into every aspect of my life? Okay, that's on the inside. But then we can translate it to the outside. Our words, our actions, our relationships, things that people can see, things that literally you can go through the day and go, okay, what did I actually say here? What did I actually do here? Was the love of God present in the word and in the action? Because if it's not, now I got work to do. And then in my relationships, are they marked by that love of Christ, that willingness? And remember, to seek what's best, Jesus gives us the example. He lays down his life on the cross that we can go to heaven. God so loved the world that Jesus gives us this model of what it means to offer one's life. Why? Because we want what's best for the beloved. So then we just look at what's the example of our lives? What is it we've said? What is it we've done? And what's the quality of our relationships? Now, I got to tell you, right? Some days... I think, you know, did okay. And then I look at this some days, I go, I didn't do so good. I didn't do so good. And how do we evaluate that? How do we get to the heart of that? How do we know? And Paul gives us that. There's a real simple way you can use this reading as a gut check. Instead of the word love for part of this passage, put your name. I do the demo, but I'll just do it in a generic way by the pronoun I. I am patient. I am kind. I'm not jealous. I'm not pompous. I'm not inflated. I am not rude. I don't seek my own interests. I'm not quick-tempered. I don't brood over injury. I don't rejoice over wrongdoing. I rejoice with the truth. I bear all things, believe all things. I hope all things, and I endure all things. Why? Because the love of Christ never fails. That becomes our litmus test. It's a very powerful way to very quickly get a handle on, is the love of Christ growing in my heart? Now, if it's not, if it's been a bad day, this is where we go directly to the cross of Jesus. This is what we bring to our daily prayer. This is what we offer when we're down on our knees or taking our time to pray or here in church to say, Lord, I need some help here because I'm having a hard time putting your love into practice in this situation. Name it. Call down from heaven and ask for the help we need. Because sometimes it's hard to love following the example of Jesus. But this is how we stretch. This is how we grow. And we don't have to do it alone. We do it with God's help. We do it with God's grace. And Lord knows the love of Christ is sorely needed in the world today. You can talk about that from a political world, social and relational tensions. You can talk about it with regards to the stresses people are under. We need to work together, but we're called to do it in the love of Christ. And when that love is present, it becomes real, vibrant, powerful, uplifting, and an example to others that God's love, Christ's love, is present in us. May we today put the love of Christ into practice on the inside and on the outside. For the simple reason, folks, that as we put this love into the daily example of our lives, we're changed. And when people see us, they see Jesus Christ shining through. God bless you all. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pause this day to offer our prayers for our needs and the needs of the church. That the church will stand before the world without stain or blemish, holy and obedient to God's word, we pray to the Lord. For an end to terrorism in the world and for the healing of all hatreds and divisions, we pray to the Lord. For the poor and the sick, the homeless and those who go hungry, lonely or unemployed, that the mercy of God will raise them up, we pray to the Lord. That our parish communities will grow in faith, hope, and love, we pray to the Lord. For the repose of the souls of all the faithful departed, especially in our own families, within our parish communities, that the Lord will welcome them into the joys of heaven, Pray to the Lord that the Holy Spirit will guide the preparations for the World Synod. We pray to the Lord for an end to COVID-19 and the pandemic. We pray to the Lord for the intention of this Mass, the health and well-being of Jeff Postles and Val Taylor. We pray to the Lord. Finally, for all of you at home, for the prayers that you offer in the comment line, for all of us, for the prayers we now offer in silence. We pray to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, look kindly upon us. Fill our hearts with love and hear the prayers we offer now, spoken and silent. We make them all in the name of Jesus, our Lord. O oh God, we earnestly ask you, to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious, and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. O oh Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, 
Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and divisions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, James our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command formed by divine teaching we dare to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress and useless worry, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. A couple of announcements. <clears throat> now, we've been praying the World Synod Prayer. We've been including it in the prayers of the faithful for several weeks now. Part of the process for the World Synod is that, get this, Pope Francis wants to hear from all of you. He's really looking to go to the far corners of the earth and hear from people about what are some of the burning issues with regards to faith and where are they coming from in their perspective of Jesus Christ. We've got a lot of different voices out there in the world and we've got a lot of different competing messages. But the Pope wants to just open all the doors and let people voice what's going on in their hearts. To that end, our diocese, like every diocese around the world, is, is soliciting input from people. And we've got two different ways to do this. On Saturday, February 12th, I'm going to have an in-person listening session downstairs in Crest Hall. It's going to be from 9.30 to 11.30 in the morning. It's a little process we work, a little explanation, a little prayer, and then there are six questions. Six questions we want people's responses. It can be very short or it can be fairly long, but we want to hear from people. Well, in this day of technology, we can also do this online. So you can either, it's on our social media. We have all sorts of links connected to this that, that are coming out of the cathedral and our cluster of churches. For those of you at home, the link should be showing up right now on your screen. It'll take you right to the diocese. Go directly to the Diocese of Superior. It's right up there at the top. World Synod, click on it a couple of times. And this process, I did it last week just to see how long it takes. If you listen to the Bishop's two minute video and a little prayer session it takes about 10 minutes and then do the six questions and do this in 15 to 20 minutes. If you wanna skip the two videos, you can do that and jump right to the questions. But she didn't hear that from me. My point is that it's a simple and powerful way for people to give their feedback about how Christ is working in their life, how the church is making a difference in their life, or are there issues? Are there things we need to look at? Are there important elements that we need to just say, this is important, we should talk about this, we should look at this, we should fix this, we should address this. We wanna hear from people. We wanna hear from folks, not just the folks who are here, but the folks who don't come, or the folks who haven't been able to come. Or the folks who maybe have something to say, maybe, maybe there's something that's really bothering them. We want to hear it all. So you can either come to the listening session on February 12th, Saturday, in the morning, downstairs, Cress Hall. That'll be in person. Or go online. We certainly want to encourage people to do that. It's a powerful, simple, and easy way to make it happen. And you can do it on your schedule. All right, Catholic Schools Week kicks off today, and certainly we want to celebrate our own cathedral school and all Catholic schools and the impact that they make in the lives of our kids. The Cathedral School Open House will be on Monday, February 7th, from 5 to 6.30 p.m. There'll be information, all sorts of things coming out with that. The World Synod Prayer. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name, with you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity, so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son forever and ever. Amen. For those of you at home, please keep sharing these Masses on Facebook. And certainly to all, I, I pray that we continue to keep moving forward in a good direction. Please, God, these numbers are coming down now. They're still high, too high, but they're moving in the right direction. We pray for everybody who's affected by the pandemic. We pray for everybody in health care and for all those whose lives have been so disrupted. May it continue to move in the right path, in the right direction. One funeral announcement. Last Friday, there was a funeral for Barbara Tomzak, and that was at St. Anthony in Superior, for the repose of the soul of Barbara Tomzak. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. May she rest in peace. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.